Armand Simmons for the Los Angeles Times. It is a controversial case that has captured the nation. An unarmed black teenager fatally shot by a neighborhood watch volunteer in Sanford, Florida. Prosecutors argue that 29-year-old George Zimmerman profiled 17-year-old Trayvon Martin as he walked back from a convenience store one February evening in 2012. But Zimmerman's defense attorneys contend that Martin was the real aggressor, and they say their client shot the teenager in self-defense. Zimmerman has been charged with second-degree murder and could face life behind bars if convicted. His fate rests with a jury of six women who began to hear opening statements in the trial today. Michael Muscal, a leading reporter for the Times' Nation Now blog, is covering the Zimmerman trial and joins me today to give an update on the start of the proceedings. Welcome, Michael. Uh, thank you, Anne. First of all, tell me, why has this case so captivated the nation? Even the president has weighed in. I think the real issue here is race, that this is a window into that. At the end of the day, you have an unarmed dead African-American teenager, and that has profound reverberations in society. And that's what President Obama reacted to when he said if he had a son, he would have looked like Trayvon Martin. The other issue is a question of equal access. And Martin's family and civil rights leaders asked the question, if the situation were reversed, and if the dead person were an unarmed white teenager shot by a black person, would the police and other authorities have been so willing to accept a self-defense argument? Well, before we get to today's opening statements, tell us a bit about the key pre-trial rulings that the judge has made and how that has impacted uh, either side. Well, the most important pre-trial ruling was when the judge over this past weekend held that two audio experts for the state would not be allowed to testify. They were going to testify that noise heard in the background of a 911 call to authorities was really Trayvon Martin shouting for help and screaming. That goes to the very heart of what the prosecution's case is, that Martin is the real victim here. Those two experts not being allowed to testify means that the defense gets a little bit of an edge, but the prosecution can play the 911 tape for the jury and can present other people who know the voice of Trayvon Martin to make whatever argument they want. And how would you characterize today's opening statements? Did one side particularly outshine the other? Well, I think the prosecution outshone the defense. The prosecution's opening statement was shorter, about 20 odd minutes. It was very punchy, very direct, and made the argument that um, Mr. Zimmerman went out and profiled Trayvon Martin very strongly. The defense took a different tact. It's far more detailed. It lasted well over two hours. It went through all of the evidence. And the question will be, which one has a greater impact with the jury? And tell us about that jury. It's, the, it's made up of uh, six women and yes. five of them white. What kind of impact is that going to have, or how important is that to, to both sides? Well, legal experts say that there's a difference in how women and men deal with the jury experience. Unfortunately, I think that's not going to have a real question in this case. I think the jurors have said and seem to be ready to weigh the evidence on its own merits which means that they will listen attentively and they will decide what they will believe and what they will not believe, regardless of the fact that they're women at this case. And what type of testimony are they likely to hear? What type of witnesses are we expecting? Well, there'll be forensic testimony that will indicate where Mr. Martin was and where Mr. Zimmerman was on the shooting. There are a couple key points, and they all deal with telephone conversations. The first one, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is the 911 call. A second telephone call that really matters is Zimmerman's call to the police and what he says on that and what that indicates. And the third telephone call that matters is a call made by Mr. Martin right before the confrontation where he is talking to a friend and he says he's being followed and he's scared by the fact that he's being followed. How the jury evaluates those calls goes to the real question of who do they believe in this confrontation. And just to wrap up, Michael, do we know how long this trial is going to last? It should go two to four weeks, according to the lawyers. Thank you so much for your insight, Michael.
For more on this story and others, please go to latimes.com slash nationnow.